sixth verse from this epistle of Paul to the church in Ephesus. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And for a brief moment, my brothers and sisters, I want to preach from the subject matter, are you dressed for the occasion? Th there, are, there are many dangers seen and unseen that lay ahead of us. And I wondered this morning what life would be if we were warned in advance of impending dangers just before they arrive. If you were told minutes before you had a heart attack, would you make the necessary medical arrangements to prevent it? If you knew that you were going to be attacked by someone who does not have your best interest in mind, would you prepare yourself to protect yourself from those attacks? Or do we get so caught up in our daily hustle and bustle of life that we do not take time to pay attention to the warning signs? Have we become so arrogant in our prosperity that we fail to recognize or for the sake of a better word, realize the need for God's revelation and protection. Too often we are caught up in the theology of a self-sufficient life that we fail to acknowledge our continual need to be protected by God. God created humanity to be dependent rather than independent. And as human beings, you and I, we must depend on the air to breathe. Uh, we depend upon the rain uh, to provide water, and we depend upon the earth to provide us our food. Life in itself cannot function on its own without the creator and sustainer of life providing the essence of life. I want uh, to ask you a simple question this morning. Are you dressed for the occasion? Uh, uh, we need God's protection to survive in a world that has openly uh, proclaimed its aggression uh, to the divine presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ. There exists an antichrist uh, which has waged a demonic, satanic war against all who confess Jesus as Lord. This Antichrist seeks to destroy God's good creation by implementing subtle notions in our lives that we do not need to the help of the Lord. Uh, he tries to convince uh, uh, us that we are independent beings with the ability to create and sustain life with our intellect and our intuitive minds. Uh, and as a result of a this Antichrist scare tactics, we have clothed ourselves in hatred and mantle, put the mantle uh, of tyranny upon our heads. So I just want to ask you a question this morning. Are you dressed for the occasion? There are times in our lives, my brothers and sisters, that we have all fallen victim to Satan's schemes uh, to where we are convinced or we have become convinced that we no longer need God's protection. Could it be the reason why we suffer from poor decisions and poor choices is because we refuse to be obedient to God's divine power and protection. Uh, we all have made poor decisions thinking that we have the power within us to handle the dilemmas of life that we face uh, only to discover that we are no match for the powers that come against us. Whether we are Christian enough to admit but the fact of the matter is that we all have failed to properly dress ourselves for the right occasion and in our text today we find the apostle Paul speaking of the effects of not being properly clothed for the occasion this epistle is a uh, unique among the epistles as it does not uh, explicitly address a a problem or a concern in the church uh, but in the book of Ephesians 
Ephesians, Paul uh, here is writing a treatise defining the caricature of the church. He, he communicates to them that they are recipients of, uh, uh, of every spiritual blessing in Jesus Christ. They are saved by God's grace and mandated to practice the good works of faith and to walk in a manner which is worthy of their calling. Uh, Paul then proceeds to let the church know that how to uh, the church is supposed to live as a child of God. That the church is supposed to exhibit morally pure life uh, uh, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. With this comes the ability to walk wise in the precepts and the concepts of God's purpose. Uh, but more specifically this text, uh, this sixth uh, chapter, Paul calls believers to be steadfast when facing trials and tribulations and to be prepared for conflict even while Paul himself is incarcerated on some trumped up charges because he allowed a Gentile to go into a Jewish synagogue to worship God. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Picture this, if you will. Paul is in solidarity confinement. He sits in the jail cell, and the only thing that he sees is a Roman God who's a sign, uh, uh, if you will, uh, to make sure that Paul himself does not escape. And Paul, a man of God, a child of God, had a made up mind a long time ago that he will bless the name of the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually to be in his lips and as while Paul is being incarcerated he thinks of the goodness of the Lord and while he thinks of the goodness of the Lord God begins to speak to him as he's looking at the Roman God uh, come on if you will allow me uh, uh, to use my spiritual imagination as Paul looks upon the God uh, the Lord begins to speak to Paul saying see how the God is standing in attention not afraid never slumbering and always attentive with the physical uh, appearance that exudes strength uh, brother Paul I want you to write to the church and tell my people to, to be strong in the Lord uh, and in the power of his might not only that tell them to dress for the occasion to put on the whole armor of God that they may be able to stand against the wild of the devil could you imagine come with me brothers and sisters and imagine as Paul looks at the loins of this uh, physical specimen he noticed uh, uh, the tight leather apron beneath the armor and the belt protecting the lower uh, abdomen as it's to say to the Christians that you must hold tight uh, to the truth of Christ and all that is in his spirit then his eyes Paul's eyes gaze at his chest uh, and he sees uh, his chest plate uh, 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 which uh, consisted of leather overlapped it by a uh, uh, metal material and, and God begins to speak to Paul and say my servant uh, Paul tell my children always protect my word that's in their hearts uh, it's like a police officer wearing a bulletproof vest uh, uh, not wanting to get shot but just just in case he or she finds a bullet right at their chest. If they are wearing a bulletproof vest, uh, even though they're shot at, the bullet does not penetrate their heart. Uh, is there anyone among us this morning that is not afraid to, to admit that every now and then we go into this spiritual war without our bulletproof vest on? Uh, uh, can you imagine, my brothers and sisters? Uh, then Paul's eyes went for, uh, to his feet and he saw the fancy sandals or boots that the guard is wearing. Uh, he's wearing shoes that, that as he advanced towards the enemy, he's not wearing what he steps on. Uh, uh, so he tells Paul, write to my people and tell them to place their feet the showed with the preparation of the gospel for when they travel down the valleys of the shadow of death, they don't have to worry about what they step on if they carry in the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a matter 
matter of fact, uh, the Bible says that, that God will make your enemies your footstool. Uh, and as the guard uh, 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 stands there in attention, Paul notices the shield. Uh, and uh, the Lord says to Paul, tell them above all things uh, that to take the shield of faith uh, wherewith ye shall be able to quench uh, the fiery darts uh, that will come your way. Uh, then as he looks and takes a glimpse at his head, he sees uh, this nice shining helmet uh, on his head. And the Spirit of the Lord then speaks to them and he tells them, now I'll tell my people to place on their heads the helmet of salvation and to keep my sword at their side which is my word uh, for there will come a time that, that this earth shall fade away but if you got the helmet of salvation and the word of God on your side the word shall last till eternity I don't know about you my brothers and sisters but uh, if I'm going to be in war I want to be dressed for the occasion. I want to be ready to fight a good fight. Can this be the reason why we lose too many battles? It's because we are not prepared to go to war. Are you dressed for the occasion? I believe my brothers and sisters that God is requiring us to put on the whole armor of God because there's a war that's not like any other war. This war is invisible uh, to the naked eye. Uh, the Lord wants us uh, to be prepared for battle uh, so that when trouble comes our way, uh, we will be dressed for the occasion uh, with the whole armor of God. Uh, we will be prepared to deal with uh, all the darts uh, the enemy throws our way. Uh, I just stopped by this morning uh, to ask Belton Creek, uh, are you dressed for the occasion there is a, a sense of power that one gains when you put on your protected gear when I'm equipped with the protected gear of the God Almighty I get a sense of power that comes on me that lets me know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper it's like a football player when a football player has on his it's equipment. Uh, they think they are invincible uh, and impetratable. Uh, it's just like an army going into battle uh, when they have their tanks uh, and they have all their ships uh, and their aircrafts. Uh, they gain a sense uh, of being indestructible. Uh, there's a sense uh, that comes over you uh, when you have on the armor of God uh, that you know that no matter what Satan tries to do your way, Satan cannot destroy a child of God. There is something that happens when you are dressed for the occasion. Uh, yes, even though you may get attacked from the back, you may get attacked from both sides, you may get attacked from the front, but God lets you know when you got on the right gear, there's a hedge of protection that shall come now your dwelling. I, do I got a witness here today? But one of the biggest challenges I see in the text, my brothers and sisters, with having all of this power in the whole armor of God is not being able to use it when you got it. If I'm going to buy a fancy car, I want to put the car into motion and take it as far as it can go. If I'm going to buy a 70 inch big screen TV, I'm I'm buying it so I can watch the Carolina and State game on Tuesday night. I'm not going to buy it and not watch it. But here Paul says that you're going to have a weapon that you're going to be adorned with. But I don't want you to do nothing with it. I just want you to stand once you got it on. That's kind of hard for me to grasp, Brother Paul. Why is it that I can't use all of this weaponry when I get got it on my body but Paul says here uh, that when uh, you have on the whole armor of God uh, that you become a vessel of God and I believe the armor of God is a metaphor that informs 
becomes the body of Christ. Uh, that in order to uh, defend against the spiritual assaults. Uh, perpetrated by Satan we must be properly dressed for the occasion I believe that if we are going to win a war we must be able to stand in the battle is there anybody here today that is ready to go to battle for the Lord well are you dressed for the occasion let me tell you what I also believe I believe that God God's equipment is only activated when we stand firm in the faith and not wavering to every false doctrine or every glamorous movement that tries to tickle our fancy. We must stay spiritually protected and wait for the directions of the general. That's why Paul writes, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. Paul calls the believers not only to arm themselves with the power of God's love, but Paul also encourages us to put on the whole armor of God. This will enable believers in Jesus Christ to resist the assaults of the enemies in the last days. But there is something that happens when you equip ourselves with the righteousness of God and cover our minds with the salvation of the Lord. There is something that happens in high places when the people of God uh, prepare their feasts uh, with the preparation uh, of the gospel. Uh, there is something uh, that happens uh, in high places uh, when we arm ourselves uh, with the shield of faith. Uh, we gain confidence uh, in the most high. Uh, we build trust uh, in the almighty. Uh, we become open empowered uh, by the Holy Ghost uh, and we become moved uh, by his righteousness righteous and when we stand on the gospel we deliver a patience that lets me know that trouble don't last always we no longer become too busy trying to figure things out for ourselves we began to have patience and be able to wait on the Lord and I like the way Isaiah said it they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up like wings as an eagle they shall run and not be weary they shall rock and not faint I just stopped by to ask somebody this morning are you dressed for the occasion There is something. There is something that happens when the saints of God equips themselves with the whole armor of God. Uh, we don't have to develop a war strategy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We don't even have to try to figure out how we're going to get back at the enemy. Uh, when you have on the whole armor of God, you come to realize that when you stand on his word, that the Lord shall fight your battles, for the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Stand and see uh, the power of his might. Stand and witness the goodness of his glory. Stand and observe that he can never be defeated, never overtaken, never outsmarted, never unprepared, and never late for battle. And as I come to a close this morning, I just understand why the Lord wants you and I to dress 
for the occasion. The reason why God wants us to put on the whole armor of God is because he wants to have an intimate conversation with you and I without distractions. You know that when you are in the presence of the king, you have to adorn the king's attire. And if you don't have to worry about distractions, the king can tell you exactly what you need to know uh, and that's why Paul says uh, when he continued to look at the guard uh, pray in the spirit uh, uh, on all occasions uh, with all kinds of prayers uh, and all kinds of requests uh, with this in mind uh, be alert uh, and always keep praying uh, for all the saints uh, in other words uh, after you have prepared yourself for battle uh, and after after you have been dressed for the occasion all God wants you to do is pray with all your heart not just any kind of prayer he wants you to pray all kinds of prayers for when you clothe yourself in the righteousness of God your prayers become a prayer of thanksgiving your prayers become a prayer of petition your prayers become a prayer of supplications uh, for all you need to know uh, when you get down on your knees uh, and pray to God uh, that God shall supply uh, all of your needs uh, not according to your good looks uh, but what according to what he's already done uh, Bye bye, Belton. Uh, may the Lord uh, uh, bless you and keep you uh, in the counsel of his care. Uh, but I don't know about you, uh, but I thank God uh, that in the midst of my battles, uh, all I have to do uh, is get down on my knees and pray. Uh, Our Father uh, who art in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name. Uh, thy kingdom come, uh, thy will be done. Uh, on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom for thine is the power and for thine is the glory can I get a witness here do I got a witness that when you pray God will bless you in the midst of your trials and tribulations God activates his armor and when your enemy comes at you although they think they